Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, today's lesson is going to center around the idea of factoring simple trinomials and regular trinomials. And in our previous class, we talked a lot about the idea of common factoring and how factoring is the opposite of expanding, um, where we're looking for those numbers that multiply to create a product. Um, whereas when we've expanded, we are... We are uh, we have arrived at the product already and now we're kind of taking the product and putting it back into its factors. And that's the, the entire process of factoring where we looked at examples of, you know, two multiplied by three is six. Two and three are the factors of six. Um, we also, you know, we looked at a more complex brief example where X plus two multiplied by X plus three is X squared plus five X plus six. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is this process of looking at those trinomials, finding out how exactly to break them down into their constituent factors and write out those factors and talk about, you know, the whole reason as to why we do this, what, what the value is in finding the factors. So I've created um, a few questions and a few um, different pages that I'm going to guide you through. Uh, with respect to factoring simple trinomials and regular trinomials. So I would appreciate it if um, you are engaging with this video right now, you watch it to its full duration and um, you ensure that, uh, you know, you are taking notes as you follow along um, because this level of factoring is the beginning of a series of other factoring lessons where it's really important you you gauge your understanding and you solidify um, uh, your understanding of, of this content before moving forward. Okay. Um, so just to read the following exercises are intended to provide you with a series of practice examples and problems that involve factoring simple trinomials where a equals one. And then in regular trinomial expressions where a does not always equal one. Okay. Um, so when we're referring to a equals one and a, um, a does not equal one. We're referring to our standard form uh, with respect to a quadratic expression. So for example, um, we're talking about this equation where we say um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And that, that is our, our basic quadratic expression um, where the a value can take on different values. Um, and that value when we're graphing quadratic expressions determines whether or not there's a stretch or a compression of the parabola, but it also determines whether or not uh, the parabola is inversed um, or flipped across the, the horizontal axis. Um, so to kind of move on, we're, we're sitting right here right now, uh, to factor an expression is the opposite of expanding. So here we are trying to undo the initial expansion. So in this case, um, we have this example where we have two factors. We have x plus two and x plus four. And um, when we originally learned at the beginning of this course um, how to FOIL first outside, inside, last, that is the process of expansion. So if we take a quick look, um, if we expand this using FOIL, we do first, so x times x, uh, which is x squared. We do outside, which is the x times the 4. In this case, 4 times x is 4x. We do the inside, so the two inside terms, we do 2 and x. We're multiplying 2 and x, this is 2x. And then we do the last terms, so in this case it's 2 and 4. So 2 multiplied by 4, in this case, is 8. And if we, you know, if we take this a step further and we simplify this, we can collect like terms. We say x squared plus, well, 4x and 2x, these are like terms. So we're gonna add them. So in this case, 4x plus 2x, this is 6x. And then we're gonna tack on that eight at the end. And on the left-hand side of um, this little section of, of your screen here, these are the factors. These are the two numbers or two expressions, or I guess um, a set of uh, a set of numbers 
that multiply together to create a product. So on the right here, x squared plus 6x plus 8, that is the simplified product of the two factors x plus 2, x plus 4. Um, in order to factor a trinomial that is in standard form, so a trinomial is a polynomial that has three terms, so it's separated by two separate operation symbols. That's a trinomial. So in order to do this, um, with trinomials that have a an a value of one, we have to utilize something called the product sum method. So product sum um, refers to uh, two separate values in the trinomial. We're looking for two numbers in the equation that accomplish two things. The first thing is that these two numbers have to add to the B value. And the second thing is these two numbers have to multiply to the C value. So if we take a look at the example that we just did, where we took our factors x plus 2 and x plus 4, and we expanded that into x squared plus 6x plus 8, we can notice something um, kind of important here. If you take the numbers 2 and 4, and you add them together, you get 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. If you take the numbers 2 and 4 and you multiply them, you get 8. Remember, this is our B value and this is our C value. And technically, the A value in front of x squared, this is, this is 1. There's an invisible 1 sitting in front of that x squared. So we've taken the two factors, x plus 2 and x plus 4, we've multiplied them together to make the product x squared plus 6x plus 8. The 2 and the 4, when you add them together, they make 6. And when you multiply them, they make 8. That is the product sum method. When we are doing this, we have to figure out two numbers that add to b and multiply to c. And as you continue to practice with trinomial factoring, this process will become fairly seamless. Um, it helps to have a really good understanding of your multiplication and division tables um, because oftentimes we're working backwards. We're given the expanded product, we're given the trinomial, and you have to work backwards and undo the expansion uh, using things like multiplication and division uh, when finding those factors. So we're going to try some examples here. Okay, we have this first example. Um, it says factor the following quadratic expressions. So as a quick reminder, uh, our equation, our, our standard form equation for a quadratic expression, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. And the product sum method states that we need two numbers that add to b, and we need two numbers that multiply to c. And those, those create our factors for these simple trinomials. If we take a look at the first example, A, we have x squared plus 4x minus 5. So I need two numbers that are going to, one, add to 4, and two, multiply to negative 5. So for me, uh, one of the ways that I go about doing this is I start with the c value. I start thinking of all of the different combinations of numbers that can multiply to 5. So, for example, for c, if we have negative 5, um, the first combo that I think of is 5 and negative 1. And then there's negative 5 and 1. And as far as whole numbers go, whole integer numbers, uh, these are the only two combinations. 5 is a prime number. The only factors of 5 are 5 in itself. And in this case, because the number is negative 5, one of those two factors has to be a negative number. It's either 5 and negative 1 or negative 5 and 1. And the way that we choose between these two numbers or these two sets of factors is we have to think, okay, so out of these two combinations, which of these two, when added together, makes the number 4? Well, 5 plus negative 1 or 5 take away 1 is 4. But negative 5 plus 1, well, that's negative 4. So it can't be this one. And thus, the only set of factors 
that multiply to negative 5 and add to 4 are 5 and negative 1. So when we go to write that as a, um, a set of factors, we're going to write x plus 5 x minus 1. And these numbers represent the two factors that when you multiply them together, they create this trinomial uh, expression. And if you want, you can even test it out. So for example, let's FOIL this. Let's multiply x by x. Okay, so we get x squared. If we multiply x by negative 1, we get minus 1x. If we multiply 5 by x, we get plus 5x. And if we multiply 5 by negative 1, we get minus 5. And when we collect like terms, these two terms, negative 1x and 5x, they add to 4x. So we're left with a, a statement that looks like x squared plus 4x minus 5. So not only can we find these factors using the product sum, but once we've found those factors, we can use FOIL once again to check to see whether or not we're correct. If we had FOILed that, and we had found that the expression that I just generated is not the same as the one in the question, it means that something went wrong along the way. Now, because this number is a negative number, negative 5, it, we did kind of start off on a bit of a tricky foot. So um, if we take a look at potentially the next question, which is B, um, we might find that it's a little bit different. So in this case, we have a squared minus 10a plus 21. And once again, okay, I need two numbers that multiply to 21 and two numbers that add to negative 10. So I'm going to start by writing out all of the factors of 21. So in this case, the numbers that I think of, well, there's 21 and 1. Uh, there's negative 21 and negative 1. Uh, there's 7 and 3. There's negative 7 and negative 3. And I think that's it. I think the only factors of 21 are 1, 3, 7, and 21. And because it's a positive number, any of the negative combinations have to have an accompanying negative number because a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive. So from this combination, one of these numbers, or one of these sets of numbers, has to add to negative 10. Well, it's not going to be 21 and 1, and it's not going to be negative 21 and negative 1. It has to be one of these two, 7 and 3, or negative 7 and negative 3. Well, 7 plus 3 is positive 10, and negative 7 plus negative 3 is negative 10, which means that when we take those two numbers, negative 7 and negative 3, and we multiply them together, we get positive 21. When we add them, we get negative 10. So when we go to factor this, and I'm going to be going down here just to make some more room, we're going to write x minus 7, x minus 3. And once again, now that we've found those factors, negative 7 and negative 3, we can actually FOIL this to check it. So once again, x times x, this is x squared. If we do x times negative 3, that's minus 3x. If we do negative 7 times x, this is minus 7x. And if we do negative 7 times negative 3, this is positive 21. And we're left with combining like terms, negative 3 and negative 7, to be negative 10. Actually, this is A, isn't it? That's, that's my bad. Let's just continue with X. Technically, this is supposed to be A. So I can say A, A, A squared, A, 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 A. That's okay. It's the same variable. It's not a big deal. But the point is that we've used product and sum 
to generate a set of factors that when you FOIL them, they create the same expression. So our, our, our factors there are negative seven and negative three or X minus seven and X minus three. If we come up to question C, we have X squared plus seven X plus 12. Ah, there's the X, it's not A, it's X. So again, we need two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to seven. Two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. So in this case, the factors of 12, well, we know there's 12 and one, there's negative 12 and negative one, there's two and six, there's negative two and negative six, uh, there's three and four, and there's negative three and negative four. So again, from this selection, we have to pick something that is going to add to seven because seven is our B term. Well, just from looking at these numbers, I know that it's not 12 and one. It's not the two and the six. The two and the six make eight and negative two and negative six make eight as well. It's gotta be one of these two, three and the four. So three plus four is seven and negative three plus negative four, well, that's negative seven. So it has to be three and four. So when I go to write out my factors, I'm going to write X plus three x plus four. Once again, we can FOIL this just to double check it. So x times x. This is x squared. x times four is four x. Three times x is three x. And three times four is 12. If we collect like terms, these two x's in the middle, we have x squared plus 7x plus 12, which is identical to the expression that they give us in the question, which means that the factors that we found, x plus three and x plus four, those are correct. Those are the correct factors. If we take a look at question D here, we have x squared plus four x plus five. So once again, we need two numbers that multiply to five and add to four. So I'm gonna start by writing out factors. Okay, we have, actually, is this the same question as the first one? Ah, oh, it's not. It's not because there's a difference in the, the value of C. It's going to be slightly similar, but slightly different. We have five and one, and we have negative five and negative one. And these numbers have to add to four. Hmm. Five plus one is six. Negative five plus negative one is negative six. Hmm. Maybe this one can't be factored using using a simple trinomial. That is quite strange why this this equation is in here. Let's uh. Let's use our handy dandy internet as a resource. I do not believe this one has factors. No, I'm correct. Yeah, it does not have factors. So this this raises an interesting question. What does that actually mean if it doesn't have any factors? Well, let's pull up Desmos and let's graph this equation. And I want you to take a, a real close look at this equation and this graph. So in the red, we have x squared plus four x plus five. And I, the one thing that I hope that immediately jumps out to you is that, um, first of all, this has a y-intercept of five because the c value of the standard form is five. 
The second thing that I hope that you notice is that there are no x-intercepts for this parabola. And that's not a coincidence. Um, if you take a look at each of these different questions, so question A, question B, question C, all of them have factors. So if we take just a moment, let's say we, um, we graph in the blue x squared uh, plus 4x minus 5. So in the blue, that was from question A. If we take a look at question B, we have x squared minus 10a plus 21. Well, x squared minus 10x plus 21. That's the green one. And then if we have x squared plus 7x plus 12, that's the purple one. There is something distinct about the red graph that I hope that you see in relation to the green graph, the blue graph, and the purple graph. And if you hone in and you think about it for a second, the red parabola has no x-intercepts. So the point that I'm trying to illustrate to you here is that when you are factoring a trinomial expression that is quadratic, the factors that you find are the roots of the parabola. And we've talked a lot about this idea of the three different forms of quadratic expressions. One of those forms is called factored form, which looks surprisingly similar to what we're doing with trinomial factoring here, where R and S, these two values here, these are the roots of the parabola. So when we go ahead and we try to factor using the product sum method, x squared plus 4x plus 5, it, there's no surprise here why there's no numbers that multiply to 5 but can't add to 4. And the reason why is because there's no roots for this red parabola. For now, we're going to put this question on the back burner. Because at the moment, there are no roots. Okay. This right here, this is simple trinomial factoring, where the value of a is equal to 1, and we use the product sum method. In our last class, I stated that the very first type of factoring that you should be trying to do is common factoring, always. The very first thing that you should be trying to do in every factoring question is finding a common factor, pulling it out of the expression, and then from there, manipulating the expression inside the brackets. So sometimes what you can do is you can common factor a quadratic expression and then use the product sum method on the inside of the brackets. So what we're going to do with some of these examples here is we're going to common factor and then from there use the product sum. And you're going to find that oftentimes common factoring makes these problems much, much simpler. So this example reads, factor the following quadratic expressions using common factoring and product sum. So in this case, this first one, question A, we have 4x squared plus 16x minus 48. Well, the question is asking me to make sure that I'm common factoring, right? Like if, if I have to try to remind myself, I'm going to highlight this in yellow, right? I'm going to, I need to common factor. 4x squared plus 16x minus 48. I need to think of a number that will divide evenly into each of those numbers. And the answer here is 4. So if I divide everything in that expression by 4, 
that just becomes 1. 16 divided by 4 becomes 4. And negative 48 divided by 4 becomes negative 12. So when I rewrite this expression on the inside of the brackets, I'm going to have x squared plus 4x minus 12. And these expressions, 4x squared plus 16x minus 48, and 4 multiplied by x squared plus 4x minus 12 are identical. They mean the same thing. All I've done is pulled out something that they each share to simplify the inside of the brackets. From here, I can now start using my product sum. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 12, but add to positive 4. In this case, the numbers that I'm thinking of are negative 12 and 1, 12 and negative 1, uh, 2 and negative 6, negative 2 and positive 6, negative 3 and 4, and 4 and negative 3. And again, because the value of C is negative, one of those two factors have to be a negative number because a positive multiplied by a negative is a negative. From these factors here, I need to think, okay, so which one of these can add to positive 4? Well, it's not going to be negative 12 and 1 or 12 and negative 1. It's probably not going to be negative 3 and 4 or 4 and negative 3. It looks like it has to be something to do with the numbers 2 and 6. So 2 plus negative 6 or 2 minus 6 is negative 4. But negative 2 plus 6 is positive 4. So these two numbers are going to start to form the basis for our factoring. When I rewrite this, I'm going to write 4 on the outside of the brackets. And then I'm going to break down this trinomial into its two constituent factors. We have x minus 2 and x plus 6. And those come from the two numbers that multiply to c and add to b. And if I want to check this, I want to check to make sure that we've got this correct, I can expand this. So let's say we have 4x minus 2, x plus 6. Let's work with the brackets first. So we'll FOIL. So we have 4 multiplied by x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12. Remember, first outside, inside, last. I'm going to simplify the inside of the brackets here. So this 6x and this minus 2x, they simplify to be 4x minus 12, which is the exact same expression that we have here. If I were to multiply 4 into each of these terms, I would get 4x squared plus 16x minus 48, which also happens to be the same expression as the one at the beginning of the question. That means that these factors that we just found, x minus 2 and x plus 6, we did it correctly. We common factored first, and then we found those two, um, those two factors. And what's funny is that if we take this expression, so let's say we get rid of all of these parabolas here in Desmos, and I write 4x squared plus 16x minus 48. Oh, 16x. There we go. Okay. If you take a real, real close look at the factors here, okay, our factors were x minus 2 and x plus 6. We have a, an intercept at negative 6 and an intercept at positive 2. So what I'm going to show you here is that if you take each of these individual factors and you make them equal to 0, so we say 0 is equal to x minus 2, 0 is equal to x plus 6, and now you solve for x, these two numbers 
2 equals x and negative 6 equals x are the intercepts of this parabola taking place at 0, 2, and 0, or sorry, negative 6, 0. So 2, 0, and negative 6, 0. These are our intercepts for the parabola. So we've done it correctly. If we take a look at question B here, once again, this highlighted common factoring is reminding me to always try to common factor first. So we have 3x squared plus 9x minus 54. Well, if I try to pull 3 out of each of those numbers, I'm going to put 3 on the outside of the brackets. I'm going to say x squared plus, well, when I divide 3 by 3, that's 1. When I divide 9 by 3, that's 3. And when I divide negative 54 by 3, that should be negative 18. So this is going to be plus 3x minus 18. And you're more than welcome to use a calculator when you're doing that. From here, we have to figure out two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add to 3. So we're going to start thinking of our factors. We have 18 and negative 1. Negative 18 and 1. We have 9 and 2. We have negative 9 and Sorry, this should be 9 and negative 2, negative 9 and 2. Uh, we also have 6 and 3, and we have negative, sorry, 6 and negative 3, negative 6 and 3. So the goal here is that one of these combinations should add to 3. In this case, it's not going to be these two. It's not going to be 9 and negative 2 or negative 9 and 2. It's got to be something to do with 6 and 3. So 6 minus 3 is 3, and negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. So in this case, it's going to be this set of factors right here, 6 and negative 3. When we write our equation, we're going to carry down that 3 that we've pulled out through common factoring, and we're going to write our factors. We have x plus 6, x minus 3. Again, to prove that we've done this correctly, we can expand this. So we have 3, x plus 6, x minus 3. We can FOIL this. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is minus 3x. x, sorry, 6 times x is plus 6x. And plus 6 multiplied by minus 3 is negative 18. I can combine like terms here. So this is equal to 3 multiplied by x squared plus 3x minus 18, which happens to be the exact same as that expression. And if I expanded this, so I multiplied the 3 into each of these terms, I would get, I apologize, my webcam is blocking that for you, 3x squared plus 9x minus 54, which happens to be the exact same as our original equation. 3x squared plus 9x minus 54. That means that these factors that we just found, x plus 6, x minus 3, those are correct. If we take that parabola, I'm sorry, this quadratic expression, and we graph it, the so 3x squared plus 9x minus 54, and we take a real close look at our intercepts, we have intercepts at negative 6, 0 and 3, 0. If we take these factors, we set them both equal to zero, and we solve for x, we get these two numbers that represent the x-coordinates of our roots, negative 6 and 3. This problem is very large. But our two intercepts there, negative 3, 0, 
sorry, 3, 0 and negative 6, 0, are proven algebraically using common factoring and product sum. If we take a look at question C, so we have x squared plus 16x plus 55. We have to think of two numbers that multiply. to 55 and add to 16. Well, we have 55 and 1. We have negative 55 and negative 1. We have 11 and 5. We have negative 11 and negative 5. I believe those are the only sets of factors for 55. So from this, we need to think of a number that adds to 16, right? Our B value. Well, it's not going to be the stuff to do with 55. And negative 11 plus negative 5 is negative 16. So it has to be 11 and 5. When we go to write our factors, we're going to say, oh, and the other, the other beautiful part about this, I totally forgot, we don't have to common factor this. In fact, we can't common factor it. There's no number that you can pull out of 1, 16, and 55 other than 1 and have it be common factored. So we kind of lucked out here with this question. We don't have to common factor. But when we go to write our roots, our factors, we're going to use these numbers, 11 and 5. We have x plus 11 and x plus 5. And if I expand this, I FOIL it, x times x is x squared, x times 5 is positive 5x, 11 times x is positive 11x, and 11 times 5 is positive 55. This is equal to x squared plus 16x plus 55. If we take this equation and we graph it, x squared plus 16x plus 55, and we look in real close. We have intercepts at negative 5, 0, and negative 11, 0. Well, if we come back and we look at our two factors here, and we make them equal to 0, so 0 equals x plus 11, and 0 is equal to x plus 5, and we solve for x, in each, these are the x-coordinates of our two intercepts for the parabola, negative 11 and negative 5. And that's evident. You can see it right there. Essentially, what we are doing here is we are converting a parabola, a quadratic expression, from standard form into kind of like factored form. It's not fully factored form um, because oftentimes there's instances where the A value does not equal one and it makes it a little bit more tricky with a little bit other things that you have to do with respect to decomposition, which we're going to do. Um, but we are essentially finding the roots here. Factoring a quadratic expression is finding the roots, the x-intercepts. For question D, we have 13x squared plus 39x plus 26. The very first thing we're going to do is common factor. These are nasty numbers. They're big numbers. So we're going to pull out 13 from each. 13 divided by 13 is 1. 39 divided by 13 is 3. 26 divided by 13 is 2. So we're going to be left with x squared plus 3x plus 2. We need two numbers that multiply to 2 and add to 3. So in this case, if it's 2, we have the numbers 2 and 1, and we have negative 2 and negative 1. Those are the only factors of 2. And from this combination, one of these combos has to result 
in positive three, the B value. So if we add two and one, we get the number three. When we rewrite this expression, we're going to write it as 13, x plus two, x plus one. If we FOIL this to double check our work, x times x is x squared, x times 1 is plus 1x, 2 times x is plus 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. When we simplify, we have x squared plus 3x plus 2. And if we expand, we get 13x squared plus 39x plus 26. So we've done this correctly. We found the correct roots for this quadratic expression. Once again, if we take this equation, 13x squared plus 39x plus 26, 13x squared plus 39x plus 26, and we graph it, and we hone in and zoom on those x-intercepts. We have x-intercepts at negative 1, 0 and negative 2, 0. If I take my factors and I set them equal to 0, and I solve for x in each, I have found the x-intercepts of the parabola. Those are the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts of this parabola. Negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, and we found negative 2 and negative 1. Those are our two separate x-intercepts. So from this process of using common factoring and product sum, we can break down slightly more tricky, slightly more complicated quadratic expressions into more easily managed expressions that have a value of a equals one in front of x. And that makes it a lot easier for us to solve those, those tricky quadratic expressions that can be common factored. However, sometimes math is hard and it's a bit of a struggle and the a value uh, is not always one or we're in a situation where we can't common factor, and that sucks. So for those specific sets of circumstances where A does not equal one and you cannot common factor, there is a method called decomposition. It is quite similar to the product sum method, but it has some added steps. So ultimately, what we're looking for here is we still want a number or a set of numbers that add to B and multiply to C. But rather than factoring immediately, what we're going to do is break apart that B term into its constituent factors. And then from there, we're going to factor those expressions. So we're going to go through each of these examples to kind of you know, give you a um, a quick understanding of how to use decomposition because it can be complicated and it's important to take it step by step so that you see it. So let's look at A first. We have 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. The very first thing we have to ask ourselves is can we common factor this? Is there a number that 3, 14, and 8 all share that can be pulled out? And in this in this case, no, there's no number. Which makes this a problem because the a value is not 1, it's 3. So the way that we do this is we have to take this a value and multiply it by the c value. So 3 times 8 is 24. From this point, we have to think of two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 14, our b value. 
So if we break this up into its factors, well, it looks like our B value is positive here. It's positive 14. So I probably don't need to write out any negative factors because negatives plus negatives equal even lower negative numbers. And this is a positive 14. So I'm just gonna write out the positive factors here. I have one in 24, I have two in 12, I have three and eight, and I have four and six. Those are all the factors of 24. So out of this combination of numbers, I have to figure out which ones add to 14. And it's not one in 24, it's not three and eight, and it's not four and six, it's two and 12. So what we're going to do is we are going to break up this 14 this is the decomposition part, and this is the additional step that's involved in decomposition. We're going to break up 14 into its two constituent factors. So in this case, I'm breaking it up into 12x and 2x. From there, I'm going to rewrite the rest of the equation so we have 3x squared plus 12x plus 2x plus 8. We have decomposed the middle term, broken it up into its factors, 12x and 2x. From here, I am then going to separate the first and second term from the third and fourth term. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to start common factoring the first two terms and the last two terms. And you're gonna to start to notice something. So, 3x squared plus 12x. Those two numbers, they share a common factor of 3x. And when I divide 3x squared by 3x, what's left over is x. And when I divide 12x by 3x, I'm left with four. I'm then going to put my plus sign that was right here. And then I'm going to start factoring 2x plus 8 by finding a common factor. Well, 2x and 8, they share a common factor of 2. And what's left over, well, 2x divided by 2 is just x. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. One very important thing that I want you to pick up on here is that these two terms now, this first term and this second term, they share a common factor, x plus four. So just as we did with common factoring, we're going to pull x plus four out of each of those terms. The remainder that is left from each term is three x plus two. The three x being here and the two being here. What that means is the factors, the two numbers that you have to multiply in order to get 3x squared plus 14x plus 8 are x plus 4, that's our first factor, and 3x plus 2, that is our second factor. And I can check this. So if we take this expression and we expand it, so we have x plus 4 times 3x plus 2, and we FOIL this, so x times 3x is 3x squared, x times 2 is 2x, 4 times 3x is 12x, and 4 times 2 is 8. When I collect like terms, I get 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. And this expression is identical to the one from A. The factors that I just found, x plus 4 and 3x plus 2, if we set those two factors to equal 0, So let's bring those over here. We have x plus 4 
and 3x plus 2. And we're going to make them equal 0. 0 equals x plus 4, and 0 equals 3x plus 2. If we try to solve for x here, we're going to get negative 4 is equal to x. That is our first x-intercept, negative 4, 0. If I try to solve for x here, I'm going to need to pull this 2 over. It becomes negative. And I'm going to have to divide both sides by 3. Those 3s will cancel out. And I'm left with negative 2 over 3 is equal to x. That is our second x-intercept. That's the x-coordinate of the second x-intercept, negative 2 over 3. If we take this equation, 3x squared plus 14x plus 8, and we throw it into Desmos, 3x squared plus 14x plus 8, and we take a really, really close look at our x-intercepts. Our first one takes place at negative 4, 0. Check. Our second one takes place at negative 0 0.6667 comma 0, which is negative 2 over 3. If you divide 2 by 3 in a calculator, that is the value that you will get. So using decomposition, okay, recognizing that 1, A is not 1 in this question, it is 3. So we take that number, we multiply it by C. So 3 times 8, that was 24. We need to think of two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 14, the B value. In this case, 2 times 12 was 24, and 2 plus 12 was 14. We then take that middle term, the B term, and we break it up, we decompose it into these two factors, 2 and 12. So I wrote 3x squared plus 12x plus 2x plus 8. I then grouped those two sets of terms, 3x plus 12 and 12x, and 2x and 8, into their own individual sections. And I common factored the first two terms and then the last two terms by pulling out something that was common. So for 3x squared plus 12x, that was 3x and I was left with x plus 4. For 2x plus 8, I pulled out 2, and I was left with x plus 4. And those two individual terms, 3x multiplied by x plus 4, and 2 multiplied by x plus 4, share a common factor of x plus 4. So I can pull that out of both terms, and when I, whatever I'm left over with goes in the other set of brackets. So in this case, it was 3x, plus 2. And when we expanded that, ex those, that, those two sets of factors there, okay, we got the same answer, 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. This was the same thing from the original expression we were given. We also managed to solve for the x-intercepts of this parabola by setting each factor equal to 0 and solving for x. We found that they were negative 4 and negative 2 over 3, this is the first x-intercept, negative 4, 0, and this is the second one, negative 0 0.667, comma, 0. With that said, there are six other examples on this page, or on this, this section of the video. Okay, um, We're going to go through them, but feel free to skip ahead or continue to watch. It's up to you about how to go about doing these types of questions. Let's take a look at B. So, with B, our A value is not 1. It's 4. So we're going to multiply 4 by negative 1. Our C value is now negative 4. I need to think of the factors of negative 4. Well, I have 4 and negative 1 negative 1 and 4, and 2 and negative 2. I need to think of a number that, from those factors, 
they're going to add to negative 3. Well, it's not going to be the 2 and the 2. I really, I just realized I wrote the same factors twice. That was silly of me. This should say negative 4, 1. 4 take away 1 is 3, and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the expression 4a squared, and rather than writing negative 3a, we're going to break it down into its two constituent factors here. Minus 4a plus 1a minus 1. I've taken this negative 3a and I've broken it down into the terms that you see right here. From here, I'm going to group these two sets of terms. I can pull out 4a from both of these, and I'm left with a minus 1. And I can pull out 1 from both of these two sets, 1a minus 1, and I'm left with a minus 1. Again, notice that they both now share a common factor. So I'm going to pull that out of both of them. And whatever is left over, I'm going to put that in the second set of brackets. I guarantee you that if you expanded that, a minus 1 multiplied by 4a plus 1, you would get the original expression. And the same thing, if you set each of those factors to 0, you will find the x-intercepts of that parabola. And I'm not going to go through and show you that process because I've done that a few times now in this video, but you should be able to see that the process is the same. For question C, up here, we have 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. A is not 1. So I need to multiply a by c to get the new c value. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. And I need to think of numbers that add to negative 7, because that's our b value right here. Well, we have 18 and negative 1, negative 18 and positive 1. We have 2 and 9 sorry, 2 and negative 9, we have negative 2 and 9, we have 3 and negative 6, and we have negative 3 and 6. From this combination, we need to figure out what adds to negative 7. It's not going to be the 18 and 1s, it's not going to be the 3 and the 6s, it's going to be one of these two sets, 2 and negative 9, or negative 2 and 9. So 2 plus negative 9 add to negative 7, which means that when I go to rewrite this, I'm going to write 6x squared, and rather than writing negative 7x, I'm going to instead write the factors that make up this number. Plus 2x minus 9x minus 3. I'm going to group the two sets of terms. In this case, we have 6x squared and 2x, and negative 9x and negative 3 separated, and I'm going to factor them. I'm going to common factor. The largest factor that I can pull out of 6x squared and 2x is 2x. When you divide 6x squared by 2x, you get 3x. When you divide 2x by 2x, you get 1. The largest number that I can pull out of 9x and minus 3 is negative 3. If I want to make negative 9x with a negative 3, the inside of the bracket should say 3x. And if I pull negative 3 out of negative 3, our remainder is 1. Once again, notice that these are common, 3x plus 1 and 3x plus 1 in each term. That means that I can pull that, those, that factor out from each. We have 3x plus 1. And whatever is left over outside of those brackets is the other factor. 
2x minus 3. Just to show you, this 2x is from here, and this minus 3 is from here. The two factors of 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 are 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 3. If you foiled that, you would get the expression given in the, given in the question. And if you set each of those factors equal to 0, you would find the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts of this parabola. For question D, again, our a value is not 1. So we need to take a and multiply it by c. So 3 times 2, our c value is 6. Our b value is negative 5. Right, right up here. The factors of 6 are 6 and 1, negative 6 and 1. 3 and 2, negative 3 and negative 2. We need to think of the numbers that when added together make negative 5. So 6 and 1 make 7. Negative 6 and 1, well, those make... Negative 6 and 1 make negative 5. Those, those work. 3 and 2 make 5. And negative 3 and negative 2 when added together also make 5. Sorry, negative 5. I just realized something. I did something wrong here. This should be negative 1, which means negative 1 plus negative 6 would be negative 7. That's wrong. Hopefully you caught that in the video. 3 and 2 do not work, but negative 3 and negative 2 do work. In this case, I'm going to start rewriting the equation, or rather the expression. 3x squared, we're going to decompose negative 5x into minus 3x and minus 2x. We're then going to group 2 sets of terms, and I'm going to common factor. Common factor between 3x squared and minus 3x is 3x. If I pull that out of 3x squared, I'm left with 1, or rather, sorry, x. And if I pull it out of negative 3x, I'm left with minus 1. If I pull out negative 2 from negative 2x, I'm left with x. And if I pull negative 2, out of 2, I'm left with negative 1. These two factors are the same, so we can common factor those out. And whatever we're left with outside of the brackets is our other factor, 3x and negative 2. Expand them, you will get the quadratic expression from the question. Set each of those factors to zero. You will find the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts of the parabola. For question E, once again, A is not 1. However, look very closely at the numbers. We have 2x squared minus 4x minus 16. I'll give you a second to think about it. What's that? You can common factor? Ah, yes. Excellent work. So we're going to pull 2 out of each of those terms. 2 out of 2x squared is just x squared. 2 out of negative 4x is minus 2x. And 2 out of negative 16 is minus 8. Well, from here, maybe we don't have to do decomposition. Because now the a value is 1. The c value here is a. And we need to think of numbers that add to negative 2. Well, sorry, our c value is negative 8, not just 8. Well, we have 8 and negative 1. We have negative 1 and 8. We have 2 and negative 4, and 4 and negative 2. It's not going to be these. 
It's not going to be the eights and negative ones and the negative one and the ones and the negative eights. It's probably going to be one of these two. So two take away four would be negative two, but four take away negative two or four plus negative two rather would be positive two. So it looks like it's this one. That means when I go to write my new expression, my factored expression, again, we're not doing decomposition here, so we don't have to replace the B value with two terms. We can just write X plus two, X minus four. And once again, if you expand that, you will get two X squared minus four X minus 16. And if you set each of these equal to zero, you will get your roots for the parabola. You'll get the X coordinates of the X intercepts of the parabola. Our very last question here, you've made it. We have 18 X squared plus three X minus three. I'm going to common factor here. I can pull out three from each of these terms. I'm left with six X squared plus X minus one. Unfortunately, A is not one here. So we need to multiply A by C. Our new C value is negative six. And these numbers, these factors of negative six have to add to one. We have six and negative one, negative six and one, three and negative two, negative three and two. It's not going to be the sixes and the negative ones, the negative sixes and the ones. It looks like it's probably gonna be three and negative two because three minus two is one or three plus negative two is one. Negative three plus two would be negative one. So we need just one. Now we're gonna decompose. So we rewrite six X squared and we're gonna break down this one X into its two constituent terms. We have plus three X minus two X minus one. I'm going to group the first two terms and the second two terms and I'm going to common factor. So in this case, the common factor between six X squared and three X, this is three X. When I pull that out of six X squared, I'm left with two X. And when I pull three X out of three X, I'm left with one. Common factor between negative two X and negative one is negative one. When I pull negative one out of two X, I'm left with two X. And when I pull negative one out of negative one, I'm left with positive one. We have a lot of brackets here. Notice that these two terms share two X plus one. So we're going to start rewriting. I'm going to use the square brackets here to differentiate between the brackets for you. We can pull two X plus one out of each of those and the remaining second bracket is whatever is left over. 3x minus 1. Big bracket. Decomposition allows us to factor quadratic expressions that do not have an a value of 1. So typically this a value appears as a number greater than 1. That means that the parabola is stretched, it's vertically stretched, we've pulled it up, it rises much, much faster than it runs. And by breaking apart that B value in the middle into its two terms that we get from the factors of C, we can work our way downwards and common factor out numbers that they share and whatever is left over in the remaining brackets. And you can always check your work by expanding your factors to see if you get the original expression and you can use these two factors that you find, set them equal to zero and you will receive the X coordinates of the X intercepts of a parabola. I hope that you have found this video helpful I realize that it's a long video, but it's necessary. Please go try the questions on Google Classroom and the various practice activities. 
Um, I very much appreciate you watching this video. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you later.